what's with these clowns. Today we're going to actually look at the in-depth proper way to do real research to get the right prices on your items. Hey, it's done. Literally the question today is what's with these clowns? We're going to look at something I just sold and we're going to go step by step on where I came up with the price for this item. I picked something really bizarre, something really strange today to give you an idea from the broadest reach of collectibles. So here's an item that I just sold. I have literally a dollar into this. It's in a purchase, a haul video from some time back. A dollar is what I have into this. It's pretty ugly. It doesn't look like much. It's squishy rubber, more modern day. Uh, it looks like it's kind of cheaply thrown together. The bottom of this looks like they just cut off the bottom and shoved a piece of plastic in there. It all looks fairly new, probably 50s, late 50s, early 60s. I've had tons of rubber toys, tons of stuff like that. No way this is before late 50s. Just no way. It's just cheaply constructed in the whole work. So... It's something that I had to go and research a price. Now, what would you do to research a price? We're not even touching on the fact that most people wouldn't know who this is supposed to be. This is actually a named, known clown. Emmett Kelly is who this is. Very, very well-known clown. He was with Cole Brothers Circus. He did, I think, maybe eight or ten years for Ringling Brothers in the 40s through the early 50s. Some of the history with him, you have to kind of know that to be able to price something. If you did a Chrome image search, you should at least get Emmett Kelly as a name for this one here. Would you know it was a coin bank is another question someone might think. It does have a slot in the top, so you would think that this is a coin bank without a doubt. The construction, though, just it's, it's cheap. It's very cheap. What this actually looks like to me is a doll head. And that's literally what it looks like that they have used and repurposed as a bank. And that's part of what I took when I first found this. I figured for a dollar, it's Emmett Kelly as a doll head. Maybe somebody's altered it. I could still do okay with it. I took a chance at a dollar. So researching a clown bank. The first place I always go is going to be Terra Peak. Terra Peak's got the best source for free. Again, you don't have to pay for it. It's included, I think, with most all stores on eBay these days. And I'm going to look up Clown Coin Bank. It's a coin bank. That's what technically most people would put in the title, I would assume, based on, you know, years of selling this stuff. Obviously, eBay has changed the search results around. So you're going to have to dig into this a little bit. Again, I already know this is Emmett Kelly. You may not know that. You may just be looking for a coin bank, a bank, or something like that. Now, I start with the basics whenever I'm doing a search. Clown Coin Bank. That's what I looked for. And it shows me there's 458 that use those three words. At least that's what eBay is showing me. There may be dozens or hundreds more that for some reason eBay is not showing me. It's very possible. Who knows? First thing I always do is sort them by highest to lowest. And I also do kind of pay attention to the dates on them. Obviously with Terra Peak, you can only see sales from the past year. And that is it. So that's all you're limited to. So looking through here, I've got some Holt Howard. It's a very well-known brand, totally unrelated to what I have. Another Holt Howard, bobbleheads and things along that line. You've got a bunch of cast iron, some advertising. So we're already jumping down and nothing is even remotely as cheap as what I have so far. I'm still going down. We're down to the 50 range. We're down a little farther. I keep on going down. Again, these are all cast irons. Uh, reproduction tin lithodes, all unrelated to a junky looking rubber clown head that someone's turned into a bank. Mine does look like it was turned into a bank at the factory though, which does help a little bit because it means that it was at least altered or made to be some sort of bank from the looks of it. Now, none of these are the same. You'll see some plastic ones. There's some bookends up there. A bunch, again, of these cast iron reproductions. We're already down to $39.99, and I still haven't seen one under this search term right here yet that qualifies for what I'm looking for. We're still going down. We're still going down. In fact, there's mine. Mine did sell for $27.50 plus shipping. 
So mine is honestly the highest one you'll find in this section here that's rubber. Every other one up here is plastic, um, tin, or uh, uh, cast iron basically across when you look. And I spent a little time digging into this one because it was something I hadn't seen before. Now, something else I might do is I might remove the word coin and see what comes up too, because maybe I'm just missing something. I'm not using the right terms or someone didn't think to use the word coin in there. Now, coin bank, the word coin in front of a bank is usually a good thing because most people who collect banks would want to know it's a coin bank specifically. If you typed in bank, you're going to get banking industry stuff. It's going to be thousands of items that you could probably care less about if you're just looking for the word bank on eBay. Now with the word clown and bank, I now have 1600 plus items I can look through to determine if any of them match mine. Now that's obviously well over a thousand more options to look at than just using clown coin bank. So the more words you use in a description to research something, the less items you will obviously see. So you may be missing something when someone doesn't know proper words to use or keywords or anything along that line. There's many different aspects of it. Now you're going to see mechanical banks. This isn't a mechanical bank, so I'm not really worried about those specifics. That's why I used coin bank and clown to start off with. And you can look through here, mechanical banks take up the majority of all of the new ones that have been added in at the very top of this list. There are some wind up ones. Those are just as rare as a coin bank. But as you go through here, you're going to see that those are the top of the notch ones here. Mechanical banks, totally unrelated to anything what we're looking at. So I can keep sliding down here. And basically, I'm just going to be looking at the same ones I've already looked at. You can look through here yourself or already down in the same price range from the prior search that I found before. Now, you may find some other ones. You may find the one you're looking for, but this is the best way to sort through what you want to find. Look through it however you want, but sorting it down with the fewest keywords is always the best way. If you can use one or two keywords to find your item first, you're going to have a better chance in having a lot more items to look at to compare for a price. If you limit your search down to four or five words, you're going to have so few items that show up in a search, you may not have any way to actually get a competent uh, assessment on the price. So few words is always best. It may take you longer to do that. It may end up that you need to add a third word or a fourth word to eliminate some of the junk that was in there that has no bearing on what you're looking for. So you can keep on looking through here. Again, we're going to run into the exact same ones that we saw before. A lot of these just don't, you know, match to anything like a rubber head bank or anything like that. Now, I can type in the word rubber. We can do that one as well. So I can do clown rubber bank, and it's going to show you a limited number of them, six, a total of six. And this is what we get here on the six. Now, there's one that sold for higher than mine. There's mine, and then there's one that sold for much lower. Now, these are all the same ones. Now, the image-wise, the top one, the image is dark around it. It doesn't show off. Mine is a better image. The quality of mine is about the same as this one, but they used a side shot, so it's hard to tell who it is. Face on, dead straight on would be the best thing. This one as well went overseas, so whoever bought it spent a ton of money to have it shipped. Now, this first one here that says 1940. Now, this can't be a 1940 bank. It's the same one. I've looked it up a different way as well. The rubber that's in this is totally wrong for 1940. As well, this person put it from a time frame where there wouldn't be licensed products without a circus name on it. In the 1940s, Emmett Kelly's likeness was owned by Ringling Brothers. There is no way on earth that someone would have been able to use it legally and produce and sell the items without having Ringling Brothers name on it. They controlled all of their registered clowns, trademarks, anything that they had possession of as a clown working for them from 1940s through the 50s would not allow this sort of action. These are not marked. There is no marks. So it is not a piece from that time frame because of the construction of the item as well as the lack of markings on it. They are a stickler for marketing everything related to their circus. 
Now you can do a quick search once you know it's Emmett Kelly and you can look up this information as well. He was with several other circuses. He was with the Cole Brothers in the 1930s. Cole Brothers, a very well-known circus. I've got posters here. I've shown halls of posters with Cole Brothers and stuff in it as well. And then from that point on, he actually joined Ringling Brothers in 1942, where he was a circus clown for them up and through the 50s. So at this point, unless it's marked Ringling Brothers, I can't see any way that you would find a piece, unless it was a bootleg item or just simply not from that time frame. So this does play into here because if you're listing something with a specific date, you have to be sure that's what it is. Now I took that into account when I was actually pricing my item. I knew without a doubt that there's no way that this rubber head is from the 40s. There's just no physical way that that was possible. The rubber's wrong, it's not stiff, it's soft, it's squishy like a doll head from the 50s, 60s, and maybe a little later. Again, he was licensed a clown with several circuses, so he would not have been able to produce his own items off-brand, off of Ringling Brothers, like a bank like this. Again, it wouldn't have been something they would have messed with for a bank in the first place. In the 40s, rubber was used for the war effort up until 45, so it would have to have been later than 45 for them to have available rubber to produce something like this as well. So there's so many reasons that the item that we're talking about here is not from the 40s. Again, I don't misidentify things. Now again, as I said, I believe this item was a doll's head. So I did look up a few dolls. There are some with similar designs, similar looks. Obviously, they're painted a little better. Now there's many other ones as well. The rubber came out in the 50s. End of story. There's, there's just no way that it's any older than the 50s, mid-50s. This is post-Ringling Brothers as well. There's no Ringling Brothers markings on it. It's from a specific toy company that wouldn't have went through Ringling Brothers from all accounts I can find. So this is the dating-wise on this one, 1950s. Now, I don't think at all that this person intentionally tried to mislead somebody by putting the 1940s. Maybe it's wishful thinking or not, but you can't price it that way. Something from the 40s when he was under contract with Ringling Brothers would be worth far more than when he was not. Ringling Brothers adds a second dimension to the collectability of this. Now, I put mine up for 45 bucks. Kind of in between there. I expected to get a little less than that, obviously, just because I know what this is. It's 50s or later, basically. The other competent one that's priced and it's in the same basic range as mine sold for $19. So price-wise, I did 45 I went back and forth with several different people. No one hopped on it at $45. I had a bunch of people looking, lots of watchers on it. It wasn't really a hot item. If it was, it would have sold fairly quickly at the opening price on it. Did go back and forth. I do know some track records. Now, if you go to, say, uh, Worth Point or a couple other sites, you'll find other ones selling in the 15 to, say, $25 range as well. This is an outlier up here. I didn't even pay attention to the price on this one just because I know it was misidentified. I would no way in my right mind list something from the 40s if it wasn't because people will be paying more based on your actual title. I never want to mislead somebody. I would rather lose a few dollars and market it a little later because that's probably when it was than take a shot at it and mislead somebody. Again, there's a difference in price based on the time frame this item was made. So you don't want to use ones that are using bad information on it. The sales, the price it went for is irrelevant. It is meaningless in my book because it's not a one-to-one -one comparison, misidentified or not. You know, it's just not the same thing. There's no way. So you do have to know a little bit about construction. You do have to know a little bit about who this was. But again, I do believe a Chrome reverse lookup by image should have got you his name. Now, another thing you may want to do once you figured out that it's Emmett Kelly is to do a search for Emmett Kelly on eBay as well. We're back in Terapeak, so you can kind of get a gist on price-wise for what things sell for. Now, all sorts of things for clowns in general can sell for a lot of money. Knowing the person's name, the specific clown's always better. I actually had a Patreon who found some... 35 millimeter slides tied to Emma Kelly that he sold for hundreds of dollars just because of that association. Now those are different. Those are one of a kind items, but still Emmett Kelly in general adds to it. So right off the bat, knowing that it's Emmett Kelly, that's one of your keywords right there. So you've got to research every aspect of this. If you're unaware of the person or anything about him, 
You could just put a clown bank up there. If you didn't know it was Emmett Kelly, you're going to be missing the spot that's going to sell it. Keywords have to be proper too. Another aspect on keywords, looking at the title, say on mine, the most important aspect of my title is that it's Emmett Kelly. It's all the way over to the left of mine. The date is also key and important. Everybody who's buying or collecting Emmett Kelly stuff is not going to want the later stuff. They're going to want the oldest stuff that they can get because it's almost always worth more. There's less of it around. If it's in good condition, they don't show up that way very often. So there's more to it than that. It's a head. That's another aspect. It's another keyword. It's a coin bank. Another thing. It's a vintage. It's original. Many people think clowns are creepy. So creepy. Clowns I put in there as well to fill in the little gap. You've got clown and clowns. I know technically on eBay, most of the time they do show up. Either term you use, but I'm safe. I got extra space. All my most important keywords are already in there. I wouldn't need much else other than this to sell this off. So again, I only put correct information. I don't judge my sales price on someone or some listing with false information or something that's extremely questionable, especially when it's an outlier like the $60 one selling here. Again, I'm fine with $27.50 for an item I spent a dollar on. It took me four photos. I listed it and it was sold within a week or so. Sure, maybe I could have held out, got some more money, but I'm going by the offers that came in. I'm going by the fact that I had declined offers at a lower price as well, and that I can find four or five other examples all selling in the $15 to $25 range. eBay isn't always the best source for pricing, but if you use it wisely and you pay attention, you can get a good gist on what your price should be. Now, I found some ventriloquist dummies with basically the same head. The whole dummy, the whole figure is selling for 85 bucks. I am very confident that my coin bank, again, this coin bank here, you can see the slot, definitely a coin bank, definitely made this way, is actually a recast or reused head from a doll. And that is what I do believe this is as well. It has the standardized round base like you'd see so it could be stitched into the body. The body of this item here would have been cloth as a doll. So there's a little things you have to infer into the item that you're looking at. Again, I tried to pick something really odd, really bizarre that might throw some folks. Now something else you might look for is an Emmett Kelly clown bank or clown coin bank again the terms you use are a big deal when you're putting them in here there's only four like this mine and another one so depending on the terms you used you may not even see the fact that one sold just like it for 60 bucks again i'm not counting this one because it's misidentified it's not from the 40s you know so i i don't count that one there so in all honesty this search this one here that showed the four would be probably more correct than looking at the one that's the outlier Many times you can see maybe 20 or 30 of the exact same items selling between, say, 15 and 35 bucks or so. And you might run into one that sold for 125 bucks. Now, that one that sold for 125 bucks is an outlier. I usually don't count those when I'm searching for prices because it's an oddball one out. It might have been the only one up. Someone might not have known. It might have been instantly listed and quickly sold without that person having any way to know that it wasn't worth that kind of money. So obviously the basics are to use as few words as you can to start your searches with. One or two words for the basics. Narrow it down to the category after that. Always pick the category next. Now in this case, I did not go down and narrow a category because someone could have put this in a clown section, a circus section, a bank section, or even possibly a doll section. So if I narrowed it down in this specific case down to a specific category, I could have missed ones that did sell. If your item is specifically only going to be in one category, that would be a big help. That way you can use just a couple of words and the category to help narrow this down. But again, it depends on the item that you are selling. Well, there we have it. Hopefully that gave you some ideas, some thoughts. If you enjoyed this video, please hit that like button down below. You can also hit the bell icon to be notified if I post new content or go live. Subscribe and tell all your friends.
persons are killed or injured every year by falling on stairs. This is the heavy foot type, better known as lumbering Louis. Not very soft, are they? And here is Fire Drill Freddy, late for a date. Too bad, he'll never make it now. This is Hurrying Harry. He doesn't look where he's going. He knows the stairs are there without seeing them. Oh, my mistake. Somebody must have moved one. And here comes Killer Diffle, her victim right in front of her. Poor Lockie, looks like he's in for it again. Uh-oh, watch it. Lockie, that bike, it's going to clip you. Look out! He did. But she didn't. She finally became the victim of her own carelessness.